Hello, Paul from Health House here. Today I'm having a close look at the recent Zalira insomnia trial using medicinal cannabis. Insomnia affects about 30% of all adults and whilst we have a range of medication to treat this cohort of patients, for a significant number, these drugs are ineffective and may have side effects. So I believe this was a really groundbreaking study there have long been claims that medicinal cannabis helps patients sleep, but this was the first time I believe it had been done properly with a placebo and a GMP orally delivered cannabis product that had been tested. The trial was done in conjunction with researchers at the University of Western Australia and their sleep study centre. The study itself was completed in six weeks out of a total of 167 applicants, they narrowed the field down to 24 after exclusions and put patients on a two week course of either placebo or the trial medication. Following that, they underwent a two week washout where they took nothing for the last, um, and then for the last two weeks, they swapped over to the other drug. If they were on placebo, they then took the active. If they were on the active, they then took the placebo. Um, and they were blinded the entire time, meaning they didn't know which drug they were taking. Um, and during the trial, the patients were given the option of doubling the dose if required. Uh, 23 finished the study, they lost one, and they were evaluated in a range of measures. Once they tallied up the results, they made a few conclusions. The first being the test material was safe and produced very little in the way of side effects. There were some side effects, but only mild and transient, even the patients taking double the dose that felt they needed it. The second primary endpoint is they found the trial drug to be effective. Patients on, on the drug slept longer and they felt better the next day. Uh, they quantified this by having a reduction in the ISI or the insomnia severity index by as much as 36%. So whilst these results look really promising, it wasn't enough to satisfy me. I wanted to find out more and ask to speak to the researchers and one of the patients on the trial. And luckily I was given access via um, Zoom interviews. I'm here today with Professor Peter Eastwood. He's the lead researcher in the Zalira sleep study in conjunction with the University of West Australia. Hi, Peter. Hi, Paul. I've got a, got a few questions about the sleep study. Um, I think it's really exciting space that we're separating fact from fiction. Um, but firstly, why did you decide to do the trial on medicinal cannabis and insomnia? Yeah, your, your comment about fact from fiction is interesting, isn't it? Because that's exactly what uh, the, the direction that we come from. I mean, we are a, a group of scientists and we do scientific studies, whether they be basic science or clinical studies. And this one was a clinical trial uh, and we were approached by, um, well, it was then called Zelda and now called Zalira because they've been um, bought out by a US company. And they, they had a formulation, a cannabis formulation, which they thought might be beneficial for insomnia. And so they approached us um, to help them design um, you know, the best possible uh, trial that we could think of. And, and we did. And to the company's credit, they they kind of left us alone to design what we thought was the absolute best. So, so we did. We designed a um, double blind. So we didn't know whether the participant was taking the drug. Uh, they didn't know whether they were taking the drug. It was a, a crossover study. So we did it had a placebo in there as well. So the first two weeks, they may be on the drug. They may be on the placebo. They have a washout for one week. And the next two weeks, we cross over. And, uh, but none of us knew what was happening. And it wasn't until the end of the trial that we unblinded all the results and compared them. So for me, it's um, you know, one of the most rigorous types of experimental designs that we can possibly have, particularly the placebo side, because you know, humans want something to work. And, and uh, that's just human nature. So in order to find out if whatever the intervention is actually works, you need to compare it to something that we know hasn't got the active thing in it. And that's why these results, I think, are, are particularly powerful. Mm. So what was um, the most exciting outcome from the trial? I've seen a few endpoints and a bit of data, but what for you was significant? Well, I think the most significant thing is that we found uh, significant findings. Uh, and the reason for that 
is because uh, we came into it with no preconceived ideas about whether this would work or not. Uh, we applied some pre pretty rigorous testing to it. So we used a, a thing called the Insomnia Severity Index, which is a, a subjective questionnaire, which is used all over the world to assess uh, the severity of symptoms of insomnia. Um, and, and we applied that, that was our primary outcome measure. The secondary uh, primary outcome measure was safety. You know, is this safe, does it have nasty side effects? And again, you know, we, we, we thought not based on a lot of previous literature, but we never knew that until you'd actually do the trial. So, um, so what we found was that there were no major adverse uh, events, uh, negative effects. There were some minor adverse events, which pretty much disappeared when you woke up in the morning, you know, headache, things like that in some people. And the major finding was that insomnia symptoms improved uh, significantly. Um, and to me, that was the most surprising finding, especially given the numbers were relatively small. We had 24, 23 participants, which is a quite a small number for a kind of a first in man or first in human clinical trial. Um, so to me, that's the most, most impressive thing is that we've seen um, genuinely positive results with a relatively small number of participants using a trial design that is is truly designed to not find a result, if you know what I mean. And how would something like medicinal cannabis compare to other sleep medicines like benzodiazepines? Well, it's hard, it's hard to compare at this stage, Paul, because I, I see this as a preliminary trial. Uh, what I would say is that um, at the same stage of testing um, of all these other uh, insomnia medications, I don't think the results are any different in terms of whether they're better, are they worse in terms of the effect on insomnia. Um, again, that's interesting because these are very preliminary. We, um, uh, we only had the participants on the drug for two weeks, which is a relatively short time. A lot of the other um, medicines for insomnia are used for longer periods, even though they shouldn't be. Um, and we only went to a, a second dose in some of the people. Interestingly, uh, in those who went to the higher dose, they seemed to have a better effect. Um, the trial wasn't designed to look at that, but it was a significant difference there, you know, pointing to the, perhaps that the higher dose in some people is important. So that's important for the company to know that kind of information. Um, so yeah, so it has, a, I think it certainly has a role in, um, in the second line treatment for insomnia as any, any pharmacological treatment should be. Uh, the first line treatment is a behavioral therapy called you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. The challenge with that, of course, is that there's so few psychologists who are trained that it's very hard to access. And it's for that reason that if you go and see your GP in Australia, for example, saying I, I have insomnia and the GP agrees, you will be given a sedative, a sleeping pill, 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's the reality. Uh, and so we need something that's safe, that can be used long term. And, and I think that our results suggest that medicinal cannabis could fit into that group of uh, drugs that could do that. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm joined today by one of the patients from the UWA sleep study. And it's so important to get the patient perspective on this and not get too caught up in the facts and figures and, and the science. So thank you very much for, for joining me today. Um, did you know it was cannabis when you took part in the study? Um, so, of course, it was a double blind study, as you know. And um, so, no, we weren't told, of course, if we were taking the active or the placebo. Um, but I did know the first night I took it because I had the best night's sleep I'd had for six years. And for that whole fortnight that I was taking it, I was very sure that it was the cannabis. And then, of course, we had our washout week and then we were given you know, the other. Um, and in that case, I knew straight away it was the placebo because I stopped sleeping. It's wow. that simple. Okay. Mm. That's really interesting. And did you have any um, side effects? How did you feel the next morning? Um, I loved it. I, I woke up uh, with a clear head, feeling fresh, feeling rested, no hangover, um, just got up, um, got on with my day. It was, it was amazing. Uh, yeah. The other thing that happened was, I also had a general sense of well-being, and I don't know if that was just because I was having a really good night's sleep, finally, or um, if it was a, if it was an effect of the medication itself. But uh, that was lovely, actually. Just and it lasted 
most of the day. Yeah. So what's been your experience with other sleep medications? How did it compare? So you're really limited, as you'd be aware. Um, so I had some sleep studies earlier, you know, quite a few years ago, and that excluded any sleep disorder. So then my only... Um, my only choice was then to try some over-the-counter tablets because I didn't want to take t uh, benzodiazepines. Um, and they're awful. Um, I, so now uh, I take quarter of a rest of it once a week on Friday night because by Fridays I'm desperate for a decent night's sleep. Uh, and even, even though, you know, you can take up to two of those tablets, a quarter still gives me a night's sleep and leaves me with a horrible hangover. Mm -hmm. And I wake up really grumpy and hungover until about 10 o'clock in the morning. So I really try to only take it once a week. Sometimes I get desperate and take it another time in the week, once or twice more. Um, but yeah, I mean, your choices are so limited um, between that kind of medication and benzos. And mm -hmm. I don't want to take benzos or anything else of that ilk. So if the um, sleep study drug was commercially available on prescription, would you consider taking it? I would absolutely. In fact, I'm going to try and track it down. I'm going to try and... Um, when I get the results of my studies, uh, of my sleep studies, etc., um, from this trial, um, then I'll be going to the GP and seeing what we can do about it. And have any of your friends found out you've been um, using a medicinal cannabis product and made any jokes at your expense, such as ordering pizza in the morning or wearing tie-dye or listening to Bob Marley? Well, none of those. Um, but, you know, women, women of my age, shall we say, sometimes forget the odd word here and there. And every time I did that in front of my children, I said, oh, mum's off her face again. Look at her, you know, <laughs> look at her. She told us not to do drugs and looks what she's doing. And the other thing was really funny with my other friends. I was very really open about it because I think it was a great thing to be part of and I'm really grateful that I was chosen to be part of it. So I was very really open about it. But when they wanted to ask me about it, they talk in hushed tones, you know, as if it was like a secret. And it was if as if it was my dirty little secret that we shouldn't really be talking about. It was, it was actually very amusing. Yeah, yeah. But that, that was the main thing. And, um, and I didn't start listening to Bob Marley or eat pizza. <laughs> It was just my crappy dad joke, yes. Thank you so much today. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Really interesting stuff. What a great result. A lot of preclinical work has been done in the area of insomnia and medicinal cannabis. To find out more, I spoke to a scientist who's been studying this field for some time. Hello, I'm here with Dr. Katrina Green. She's a medical scientist and has a PhD in neuropharmacology. Hello. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask you about patients taking medical cannabis. Do they dream? Um, so the research so far and in speaking to people, um, I think mostly no. And I think that's because um, as with most um, insomnia medications, uh, cannabis doesn't necessarily allow you to get into that REM cycle. So the REM stands for rapid eye movements. And um, this is when we have most of our dreaming um, episodes. And um, the literature to date shows that um, existing medications that people use for insomnia don't actually allow you to get into that REM cycle. So it's more in the lighter sleeping stages of sleep. Excellent. Thank you. So what's actually happening at the receptor level? Yeah, so there's a lot of exciting research happening um, trying to understand how cannabis can actually help us to go to sleep. And one of the main things that researchers are finding, including um, some work that came out of my laboratory, is that some of the components of cannabis actually work on GABA. And GABA is a major stop signal in the brain. And that's one of the main ways by having all this stop signal in our brain, that's one of the main ways that we can actually fall asleep. Um, and there's evidence now to show on a receptor level and even on an enzyme level that things like cannabidiol, for example, um, and also the um, cannabis, uh, the endocannabinoids that we have in our brain, so one called 2AG, um, they actually work on GABA receptors. So they're actually helping us, helping our stop signals to um, actually help us to get to sleep. Excellent.
next one. Absolutely fascinating. A Canadian prescriber I've spoken to has described medicinal cannabis as one of the best sleep medications on the market. Are we at that stage? I don't think so. However, I think it's a really great start that the medicinal cannabis formula used in the trial was found to be safe and effective. A lot more work needs to be done getting this trial peer reviewed and published. And Zalira are currently looking at doing further studies on the medium and long-term efficacy, as well as the potential for addiction. Their long-term goal is to register a commercial product for therapeutic use. I'll be following this very closely. Thank you.